breathe. Deep breath. Now push. When one is giving birth, both are important. Langston Hughes classic poem encourages us to labor together in bringing the America of our dreams to reality. His words and ideas are similar to those of Sikh activist Valerie Carr, author of a fantastic book entitled See No Stranger that I spoke about in another sermon. Carr shares the feeling that so many of us do that we are in a dark place. But she says, what if it's not a tomb? What if it's a womb? What if our America is a country still waiting to be born and the story of America is one long labor? What if all the mothers who came before us who survived genocide and occupation, slavery and Jim Crow, political oppression and sexual assault are standing beside us now? Then this election is the great contraction before we birth a new future. Now Carr shared this after the last election, as we were all not knowing what to do. She said, remember the wisdom of the midwife, breathe, then push. I thought of her words often during the last four years and especially during 2020. We do have to have that balance to draw in that spiritual breath and energy to give us the strength and courage and then to push for those principles we hold dear. The birth metaphor is a strong one. And of course, it's been used throughout history and religion, politics, and more. And sometimes we hear, hear the words rebirth or born again. It occurred to me on Thursday that perhaps that is the metaphor that we need to use to reflect upon this year and this election. This nation needs to be born again. So if I go back to my Baptist self, I guess I'd be preaching a revival message today. The results of this election, election bring forth a lot of mixed reactions from most of us. Most of us are probably feeling happy about some things and not so happy about others. One thing is clear. We are a deeply divided nation. President-elect Joe Biden, doesn't that sound good? President-elect Joe Biden said in his speech last night, it's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, to lower the temperature, to seek to see each other again, to listen to each other again. To make progress, we must stop treating our opponents as our enemy. We are not enemies. We are Americans. The Bible tells us that to everything there is a season, a time to build, a time to reap, and a time to sow. And he added, and a time to heal, to heal. And I promise that today's service would provide an opportunity for folks to heal by sharing in a safe space. So I'm going to give up five or six minutes of my message time and turn it over to you in a breakout room to perhaps take times and take turns sharing, share a joy, then a concern, and then a hope related to this election and to our future. And you'll have more time to share during our coffee time after the service, but I wanted to provide some time within this message. You will get an invitation to join a small group, and I ask that you accept that and share with one another. Those of you who like to keep your camera off can either turn it on or keep it off in the small group, do, group but do join. And if you don't want to share, you can pass. I'll let you know when you have just a minute to wrap it up. You'll see the, the clock, count it down. So what I'm going to do now is have some breakout time for you, though. Hope you had some time to... Um, to share with one another your joys and your
concerns and your hopes. I think that uh, we all realize the need to reach out to those who may have voted differently and have different views and be sometimes be willing to compromise or delay some things while we work with others in this divided nation. But that's kind of easy for us with great privileges to say, isn't it? It's not so easy for many others. And so, yes, I will be willing and encourage you to be willing to reach out, to find common ground, encourage our leaders to compromise on some things perhaps, or delay some things, but not too much. If we really affirm our Unitarian Universalist principles, then we also have to be willing to continue to fight for them, to labor as mothers do to give birth so that we can birth a better America for us all. I share with Valerie Carr her words and her commitment. She says, I will breathe, I will push, I will fight. She says, I will fight for mothers and grandmothers, women who work and women who will keep families together during the hard times to come. I will fight for their daughters, Girls, girls who will need to believe in the sanctity of their bodies and power their minds, who will need to fight the misogyny that surrounds them. I will fight for the dignity of all people who continue to be attacked and hurt. I vow to fight the racism, homophobia, and xenophobia tearing us apart, and the surveillance, detentions, deportations, and killings that terrorize us. I will pray with you in the sanctuaries and march with you in the streets because there should never be walls in the human heart. And yes, I will fight for the people who voted for Donald Trump to be president out of their own feelings of economic and racial anxiety, pain and loss because revolutionary love takes root in common ground, not closed ranks. As Langston Hughes said, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet and yet must be. And so I, Jane Page, swear this oath. I will fight for my son, my grandsons and great grandchildren, my country and for you and yours too and also for others, especially those who've been marginalized in our society. I will affirm our Unitarian Universalist principles and join with others to birth a more inclusive, equitable, peaceful, loving nation. And here comes the altar call. I encourage each one of you to place your hand over your heart and commit today to continue the good labor of revolutionary love that so many of you have been involved with so long with diligence, courage, and faith for a better tomorrow. So yes, let's take a deep breath and push with revolutionary love. May it be so. May it be so.